What's going on guys? Today we're catching fish the old school way. This is the Mitchell 304. It's a spinning reel released in like the 1960s and I've revived it from a POS to something that is fully functional right now. Uh, I've re-spooled the lineup and we're also using these old school shad darts. These old school shad darts are like from, I got them from a flea market for a while back, but these are from like the 1960s. Hasn't caught anything for 40, 50, 60, 70 years. I wanna see how many fish I can catch today using only old school gear. Today we are out fishing in the back creeks of the Chesapeake Bay, going after the spawning white perch. Now Maryland is currently under a stay at home order, which means you're not allowed to go out unless you're fishing for food. You can only be fishing for sustenance right now, no catch and release. And I can't think of a better way to practice social distancing than by getting on my boat and doing some good old fashioned quarantine fishing. Now some of you may have never used these old reels before, or old lures, stuff like this before, uh, but for me, these reels are awesome because you can completely fix them up yourself. This was completely junked up. The oil in there, the grease in there was all caked up and solid. Um, the line in here was terrible. It was in horrible condition. Took me about, you know, three, four hours and I fixed it up into perfect working condition. And I bought this for a very cheap price. This is a great hobby to get into that's very budget friendly and very rewarding because I feel like this reel hasn't caught anything in like 40, 50 years. Back in the day, Mitchell Garcias were like number one. They were imported from France and everyone had one and it was, it was a very reliable reel. But now their value has gone down so, so, so much that you can snatch them up for like $5 a pop. So cheap. I also got these shad darts right here from a flea market for like a dollar a pop. Usually buying these new will cost you like you know, like two, three, four dollars a pop, but I got them for very cheap. This is a very cheap budget setup right now um, because I know not everyone can, can afford to buy all the fanciest gear. I wanna see if, you know, what's the big difference? Can I use budget gear and catch a whole mess load of fish? Yeah, these shad darts are really old. They look in great condition, but the feathers are, the, the hair is starting to come off. Look at that. So this white one looks way better. I'm gonna use the white one. Tie that white one on the top. Ow, that hit my hand. So I'm letting it sink to the bottom. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I love perch fishing. This is a blast. Whoa, that's a big one. Oh yeah. That's a nice size one right there. Keeper. And I just hit him right here. One. Another one. Oh, it just got off. Sink. On. Whoa! Another nice one. Oh man, this is fun. Good old fashioned pan fishing. There we go. Okay, I've got two functions here. This one has the anti reverse, but it makes all these clicking sounds hear it? Anti-reverse doesn't allow the reel to go backwards, right? It gets stuck. When you, ha when you don't have that function, 
it can go all over the place and go it can go forward and backwards that's a tiny thing that's a tiny one that's too small I don't know, this clicking sound is kind of annoying, huh? <laughs> so old school. Oh, I missed one. I don't know if you'd want to like roll up on someone's spot and fish next to them using that. Yeah. <sighs> so much noise. There we go. That's nice. So now I'm here catching not only dinner, but bait, because bait stores are closed. And um, I'm just stocking up on this stuff so that when the season's here, I'll have bait. So now this is with the anti-reverse. You hear the click, 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 right? I can turn that off and it's much smoother. I think I prefer it that way, actually. I definitely prefer it that way. But it goes in reverse, right? Yeah. I found a hole of perch right here. That's two big ones. Nice perch. I thought it was a shad that bit it at first. Wow. Nice. Two at a time. Wow, this rig worked really well. So what I'm using is called a tandem rig. That means that I have one jig head on the bottom and one jig head on a dropper loop right above it. This is a classic way of fishing. I recently learned about this while reading a book called Pan Fishing in the Chesapeake Bay by Sean Kimbrough. And he talks about this rig and how effective it is for white perch, for shad, for all sorts of different panfish in the Chesapeake area. And I've tied on two classic shad style darts. And basically what I'm doing is I'm casting it out, letting it sink to the bottom and working it back by jigging the bottom little slight movements up, letting it flutter down. There's all sorts of different ways to fish it, and really it all depends on how the fish are feeling that day. This is a good spot. I like this spot. It took me a little bit to boat around and find it, but we marked a deep hole with the deeper here. Oh, and I missed the fish. I missed the fish talking to you guys. I gotta pay attention. <laughs> I'm smiling every cast. This is a great way to spend quarantine. Get yourself a little boat, a little two horsepower motor like this. Come with your quarantine buddy. And we, we're totally isolated out here. This is so awesome. I forgot I had this little bass boat. I'm not getting a bite for a little bit. I'll, I'll tip it with a bloodworm like this. I'll put a little piece of bloodworm on just like that to give it some scent. Cast it back to our spot. We'll let it sink all the way to the bottom. Oh yeah. That's a nice one too. Oh yeah. Ho <laughs> ho. Yes. Took the bloodworm too. But I want that back. Put the bloodworm back on. Pretty much as soon as I let it hit the bottom, it's getting bitten. Yeah! <laughs> a tiny. Tiny one, let that one go. Baby. Yay. 
Oh my gosh. I haven't caught one yet today, so I'm happy. That's awesome. I must have found a hole there because I keep getting bites once I cast it right into there. I'm honored to use a classic reel like this. When this reel came out, it, it made it it made it available so that everyone can fish. Before this kind of spinning reel was existed, it was all it was all the conventional style, and it was very hard for people to learn how to fish. So there's a steep learning curve, not many people fishing, not as many as today. Uh, but after the invention of the spinning reel, after the invention of the spinning reel, everyone was able to fish. Fun for everyone. Oh, I got a hit. I felt it. Oh, it tap. On his way down? Nice. Right there, huh? Hello. That's a nice one. Ooh. Eggs? That. Probably eggs. Oh. Did you f just fart? <laughs> no. You want or no? Yeah. Okay, look at the fish we got today. Half a bucket full, but all great sizes. We let go any ones that were way too big, but we've got plenty of bait and food now. I think that's enough. There's no need to keep more than you need. If we want to have a, a sustainable fishery, we can't keep every single fish we catch. We gotta let the big ones go, and we gotta let some go. This reel worked awesome. I'm so happy. It was so rewarding because I feel like I rebuilt this reel. I took this reel completely apart. Every screw was out of it. I cleaned out everything, and I caught a whole mess of fish on it. That is awesome. I did it some justice. I wanna encourage anyone who wants to try to restore one of these old reels to try looking into Mitchell Garcia reels. These are very easy to fix up and they're very fun to use. This particular one had really good drag and was actually, it's a very well put together reel. I don't know why I haven't used this before. I'm gonna to continue to use this because it's a lot of fun, especially when you're playing with big, you know, smaller fish. You don't have to worry about it completely failing on you because you know, you're only going after small pan sized fish. I would definitely use this reel again. Now the shad darts themselves, Classic style lure. They work, the modern ones work, the old ones work, it all works. My message here is you don't need to spend a lot, a lot of money on your fishing gear. You can do the same thing with budget gear. But a lot of the budget reels out there nowadays are just junk. They're instant garbage. They, when they break, you can't fix them. That's the awesome part about this reel, and I think this is very important to say, is that the, the, the awesome part about these old reels is when they break, you can fix them. Whereas the, these other cheap ones that come out nowadays, when they break, you can't fix them. With our channel, we wanna help as many people learn how to fish as possible, and we wanna make it easy to learn. Fishing is such a great way to connect with nature, connect with our world, and you know, it's not all about catching fish. I'm out here getting the sun, I'm out here breathing the fresh air, I'm really, I'm out here appreciating the world that I live in, um, and I think fishing is very healing. Being on the water can really help you de-stress, and I want to encourage anyone who wants to learn how to fish, check out our website, hayskipperfishing.com. We teach all sorts of different methods, and we do this by, by putting videos out, by writing books, and by talking to you guys on Facebook, Instagram, and, uh, and other social media platforms. I've written a lot of books on different topics of fishing. If you want to check those out, it's on hayskipperfishing.com. All right, I'm done fishing now. We're going to take these fish home and cook them up. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you next week. It's a spinning reel release in the 1960s, 1970s, 1950s. It's a spinning reel released in the 1950s, 1960s, 1970s, because I don't know what date it is.